Most of the ones that we're going to do, they're going to round off evenly. Right? So don't just round off whatever number you see. Okay? Here's the following table okay, that you can use um, to kind of give you an idea of what to multiply. So we ended right with those examples that we did. We ended with 2.01. Right? So 2.01 is very close to 1. Okay? So if, you, if you, you're dividing, okay, and the decimal part ends in 0 .0, 0 0.95 to about 0.99, just round it off to the nearest whole. Okay? If you have 0 0.01 like we did with the, the last one to about 0 0.05, round it down to whatever that was. Okay? Just remove those, those decimals. But now, what happens if it ends in... 0 0.80. Oftentimes we're just going to say, okay, let's just round it, you know, to the nearest next whole number. Right? So the whole 0.5, we round off to the next one, does not work with these. Okay? So what you want to do is you always want to multiply this point by something that will give you an actual whole number. So if you multiply 0 0.8, right, times 5 you're going to actually get an actual whole number, right? 0.75 if it ends, right? Again, commonly we're going to say, okay, we're going to round it up to the next whole. But if you take 0.75 and you multiply it by 4, you're going to get the nearest whole, okay? 0.67, okay, multiply it by 3 to get it to the closest nearest whole, okay? So we're going to use this kind of t table, okay? Because look at it, 0 0.17 here at the bottom, easily to say, okay, just drop the 0.7, right? So you get an answer like C and the answer happened to be 2.17. And we'll say, well, no, we've got two carbons. We round it down, right? No, what you're going to do is you're going to take that number and you're going to multiply it by six to actually find out what the closest whole number it will actually be. So this whole rule only applies when you're dividing the two you're rounding off only if it's in these two ranges. Anything beyond that, then, you know, you'll be given, you'll be given a table like that. But even that, even if you're not given, right? Just take take a number like um, 0.67, multiply it by two, multiply it by three, multiply it by four until you figure out when do I get a whole number. Right? So really, the highest number that we're multiplying by is 6. Right? So you won't go beyond 6. So if you'll be testing it out, right? take just the decimal part and multiply it by 1. Oh, sorry, multiply by 2. Multiply it by 3. Multiply it by 4. Multiply it by 5 until you get the closest whole number. Okay. But remember, whatever you're doing there, right? so when you're doing to that, you're doing to the others. Okay, you'll see that with uh, the next example. Okay, so the percentage composition of fuel is 81.7% carbon and 18.3% hydrogen. Find the empirical formula of the fuel. So take a moment, okay, use the, the, the steps that we've calculated already to solve for this answer. We've got carbon, okay, and we have, so we have 81.7%, but we change the percent to grams. What is the uh, molar mass? 12.01 grams per mole. So we've got that. Then over here we've got hydrogen, okay, and hydrogen is 18.3%. We translate it to 18.3 grams. We're going to divide it by the molar mass, which is 0 0.1 grams per mole. So when we divide these two to get the number of moles of carbon, how many moles of carbon do we have? 6.80 moles. Okay. Uh, and then for hydrogen, what do we get? 18.12 moles. So, right now, as it lies, the formula will be C, 
6.80, H, 18.12. So the next step is, well, we know we can't keep this formula as is. Right? So we're going to divide by the lowest mole between the two, okay, which is 6.80. So, when we divide these two, we get C, just one, and H. I think it's three, because it was 2.66. 2.66, 2 right? So we get 2.66. We cannot just do this. Three. C1H3. Oh. <laughs> Remember what we said? Only if it was 0 0.95 to 0.99. Right? We can just round it off. So that's wrong. So what we do is, what was when we, when we ended in 0.66, according to the table that I gave you, what are we going to multiply this by? <coughs> by? Three. By 3. So if we multiply that by 3, we need to multiply the carbon also by 3. So the formula for carbon is C3. And now, what is the H? So 3 times 2.66 is 7.98, right? So now, is that 0.98 in the range that we're allowed to round it? Yes, we, yes it is. So the, for, the empirical formula is C3H8. Because if we don't, if we just round off, technically... Whatever the lowest one is going to be, what is it always going to be? One. Because if we're dividing it by the lowest mole number, right, to find the ratio of the empirical formula, then we're always going to have one, but it's not the case. Look at all the different types of formulas that are out there, that we've seen in that table. They're not always going to have a one. Right? So here's the formula. So the empirical formula for this for the composition of fuel is C3H8.